pathogen inactivation. So you're talking about thermal inactivation. That's cooking used to kill salmonella and roast beef. Pasteurization to kill vegetative pathogens and juice. Um, and retort to destroy this uh, pathogen, uh, these spores, and canned foods. Freezing is used to destroy parasites and fish. So preventing the multiplication of pathogens includes storing and preparing products under appropriate conditions. Um, preventing or minimizing the growth is freezing or refrigeration, hot holding, water activity, uh, pH, exact, uh, et cetera, rapid cooling. That was one of the things we did um, in the, the, uh, the, the meat facility. Once we uh, removed it from essentially the oven, we cooled it rapidly so we don't allow it to um, even be in those warm temperatures in between. Um, and just so that's the first time I experienced that is pretty cool. But it makes sense, right? And it only makes sense because we know, you know, what uh, what we're up against with these with these pathogens. We've studied them, so that's how we know how to control them. So refrigeration as a control measure. This is the minimum growth temperatures for foodborne pathogens for these. Um, I won't go into too much detail with these. Once again, you're not going to remember this stuff anyway, but just know that this kind of stuff exists. And this is the information that we look for when we are performing our hazard analysis and prep for developing the hazard plan. So this is the kind of influence that temperature has on uh, on listeria. So generation time, depending on the um, the temperature, right? It generates you know different kind of growth. So it's a lot. It slows the growth. What you're trying to see is that it slows the growth. It um, the growth is slowed greatly at lower temperatures takes a lot of time than the higher temperatures right just with 17 degrees it takes a whole 30 plus hours more 30 times more to to grow so the prevention of recontamination ready to eat foods exposed to the environment must be protected from recontamination i mean that's pretty pretty self-explanatory after we've gone through all those um those uh safe food safety measures we need to make sure that we're getting our, our our return on our investment on the back end after you know after the kill steps we need effective prerequisite programs to ensure the pathogens due to recontamination are unlikely to occur what is that speaking to ssops right the standard uh sanitation standard operating procedures and that includes um you know making sure that the tools are clean on a set frequency Making sure that, you know, hygiene is right. Are we using different gloves every time that, you know, the employees, what is, what is the, the frequency that they're using different gloves? What's the frequency that they're using sanitizer? X, Y, you know, just on and on and on. We need to make sure that the prerequisite programs are doing their job. Env environmental monitoring is key as well um, toward the end because that's the last, pretty much the last line of defense when it comes to pathogens um, is that EMP. We need to know 